Today we are in the offices of the Friends of Chamber Music, a Kansas City institution that was established over 40 years ago. Their new season kicks off with a concert that was supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. And here to tell us more about the concert and to give us a little history about the Friends of Chamber Music is President, Founder, and CEO Cynthia Siebert. Cynthia, thank you for having us today in your offices. Oh, we're delighted to be here. And for taking the time to tell us about your history. You brought Friends of Chamber Music to Kansas City. Why did you think that was important and how did Friends of Chamber Music get started? Well, I was a young 24-year-old and didn't know any better mm -hmm. and just looked around and asked myself, what is not being heard here? And the literature of chamber music is so vast. And in particular, if you add other musics from other periods, most concert series around the country, producers, presenters, present music that's only been written in the last couple of hundred years. We cover 1,200 years, which means that we're, the percentage of repertoire is not one shelf of music, it's a hundred. It's so much more vast than people realize. The vocal literature alone from the 16th and 17th centuries, the golden era it's called, there are literally thousands of composers who were supported by kings and queens and popes and churches it's in an extraordinary fashion. The modern concert is a very new phenomenon. There were only 12 public concerts of Beethoven's works in his day. Most of them were in private homes. In fact, the Friends of Chamber Music, when it first began, began in private homes for concerts. But even from the get-go, the idea was to present the world's greatest artists. We can afford to do that in the field of chamber music because you're talking about small numbers, usually. So, for instance, the very first year we had the Tokyo String Quartet. Now, they were not as famous as they were about to become. They had not been on the Johnny Carson show. But as I looked around, I thought, why not? Let's bring this. We had Rostoprovich. I mean, we had amazing artists, world-class artists from the get-go. And that's been our stamp. Something affordable, yet never compromising artistic standards. So today we have three series, a master piano series, a chamber music series, which does mean the last couple of hundred years, and then the early music series, which goes back, well, we have a medieval program of the, from the ninth century with Ben Bagby this year. So he's one of the leading medievalists from the University of Paris, the Sorbonne. Um, so we have people who are, represent probably the top 5% in the world in their specific fields of specialty. Can you tell us about the Escher Quartet and Jason Bio? who are coming September 23rd to The Folly. Jason Vio is one of the world's greatest, he's probably the greatest guitarist of his generation in the world. He's already played with over 100 orchestras. He has numerous Grammys, Grammy Awards, Grammy nominations. Um, but the interesting thing is, it's very, very rare that you will see on one program a guitarist and a string quartet. In fact, when I, I titled this program A Rare Convergence, because they really don't go together very well. One, the guitar, has plucked strings, whereas the violin, the viola, the cellos, those are all bowed. Very different sound, very difficult to match the timbres, the dynamic levels, but these are great artists at work and they're very good friends. So they love bringing this ridiculous, impossible combination together. Some of these performances are very rare. I mean, for instance, the, our Lifetime Achievement Award, which is going to two pianists this year, Alexei Lubimov was not permitted to perform outside of the Soviet Union for many decades. He was forced to play only music that was well known to the Russians and on the accepted list, but he actually avoided the accepted list and played Baroque music, which they knew almost nothing about. At, at which point he discovers the beauty and the rarity of historic keyboards and how different Bach sounded on a Bach keyboard or Mozart on a Mozart keyboard or even Beethoven on a Graf. So as a result today, for the first time, just in the last 20 years, he built the department at the conservatory in Moscow that deals with early music that never had before. And now they are aware of historic keyboards. We are on the same program, by the way, also honoring Malcolm Bilson. He was the first person in history to record on a historic keyboard on a Mozart piano all of the, the 25 piano concertos with John L.A. Gardner. I should say Sir John L.A. Gardner, an English Baroque soloist. Um, 
the sound of an early instrument is so utterly different from a modern instrument. And suddenly, a whole world, it's sort of like cleaning an old painting, and you see colors you've never heard before. How can people find out more about what you have coming up this season? Oh, we have a great website, chambermusic.org, very simple. And where can we purchase tickets? You can just simply call the Friends of Chamber Music at 561-9999. That's 816-561-9999. Very simple. Well, thank you so much for having us today and for sharing performances that you will be having in this upcoming season. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf.